Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white Elenda deck, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. At first I built this as a black-white Vampire Synergy deck, which was okay, but it wasn't as exciting as this black-white Sacrifice Synergy deck, which makes much better use of Elenda's abilities. She's a 4-mana 1-1 Vampire Knight with lifelink, and whenever another creature dies, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Elenda, and when Elenda dies, create X 1-1 white Vampire Creature tokens with lifelink, where X is Elenda power, so she rewards us for sacrificing creatures as she gets more plus one counters, and at some point it can be beneficial to sacrifice Elenda to get an army of vampire tokens to close out the game with. So another commander we could easily play instead of Elenda is actually in the deck here, Taisa Karlov, 4 mana for a 2-4, saying if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time, so works very nicely in a sacrifice deck as well, and then creature tokens we control have Vigilance and Lifelink, so if you get bored of playing with Elenda you can replace her with Taisa and just play Elenda in the main deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck here, at 1 mana we've got some sacrifice fodder, creatures that when they die leave behind a token, so we've got more stuff to sacrifice. So we've got Garrison Cat that leaves behind a Human Soldier token. Hunted Witness leaves behind a Life Linking Soldier token. Selfless Savior we can sacrifice to give one of our creatures indestructible, so it can save one of our key creatures as well. And then we also have Gutter Bones at 1 mana, a 2-1 that we can also return from the graveyard to our hand if our opponent lost life this turn, so it gives us repeatable sacrifice fodder. Then at 2 mana we've got a whole bunch of afterlife creatures, which also leave behind a spirit token when they die, so we've got Tithe Taker, which also makes opposing spells more expensive in our turn. We've got Blood Artist, which rewards us for sacrificing creatures, so we've got both Blood Artist and Cruel Celebrant that drain the opponent whenever a creature dies, so these in combination with a whole bunch of token generators can quickly end the game as well, and of course great with Alenda, which leaves behind all those vampire tokens we can sacrifice once again. We've got Doom Dissenter, 1-1, one, one, that leaves behind a zombie when he dies. Dusk Legion Zealot enters the battlefield and draws a card, so another small creature that we don't mind sacrificing. Enforcer, a 1-2 Death Touch with Afterlife. And then, what else do we have here? Priest of Forgotten Gods, of course, a staple in any sacrifice deck. Sacrifice two other creatures, and then if the opponent will have to lose two life, sacrifice a creature, and we also add two black mana to our mana pool and draw a card. Also very synergistic with Gutter Bones, as we can spend the two mana to get the Gutter Bones back into our hand. And then we've got... Imperious Oligarch as another afterlife creature to one Vigilance, and finally Pitiless Pontiff, which gives us a sacrifice outlet, so for one mana we can sacrifice another creature to give Pontiff Death Touch and Indestructible until end of turn, so also helps us play around Sweeper effects. Then moving up the curve, we've got more sacrifice outlets with Yaheni, a 3 mana 2 2 with haste, saying whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Yaheni, and we can sacrifice another creature at any time to make Yaheni indestructible until end of turn, so we can activate this ability however many times we want, so it can be useful to help us close out the game if we've got something like a Cruel Celebrant or Blood Artist in play, and just want to sacrifice a whole bunch of creatures. And then we also have a Wolf Strider, which leaves behind a Goat token when it enters a battlefield, and we can sacrifice another creature to scry one and can also escape strider out of the graveyard for five mana by exiling four other cards and then of course midnight reaper another classic staple in these sacrifice decks we lose one life and draw a card whenever a non-token creature dies so it gives us a nice bit of card advantage and then ministrant of obligation another afterlife creature this one leaves behind two spirit tokens when he dies and then at 4 mana, Luminous Broodmoth, also excellent in this deck, a 3-4 flyer, saying whenever a creature we control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it, so if we sacrifice one of our cheap creatures, they'll come back with flying, so we can sacrifice them once again and generate more tokens. And then Rankle Master Pranks, another way to potentially sacrifice our creatures if he connects with an opponent. And we can also use it to draw additional cards and maybe make the opponent discard a card if we're empty-handed. And just a Flying Haste threat can be useful for attacking down Planeswalkers. And then we've already covered Taisa. And then at 5 mana, God Eternal Bontu, another way to sacrifice creatures. A 5-6 with Menace, saying when Bontu enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of other permanents and then draw that many cards. And when Bontu dies, we can also put it back into our library third from the top. And Cavalier of Night gives us a bit of removal if we sacrifice a creature. And when a Cavalier dies, we can also return a creature with converted mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So plenty of synergy. 
Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we've got a bit of removal here with Fatal Push, pretty easy to enable Revolt in a Sacrifice deck. Spark Harvest is a one-mana removal spell as long as we can sacrifice a creature and can even take out opposing Planeswalkers. Village writes an instant speed way to sacrifice a creature and draw two cards, then a two-mana more removal with Heartless Act. The Spark can also get rid of permanents like Planeswalkers, Artifacts and Enchantments. Final Payment can also take out creatures or enchantments at the cost of 5 life or if we sacrifice a creature. Hidden Stockpile from Kaladesh Remastered, also nice in a Sacrifice deck as it's easy to enable Revolt and generate a Servo token each turn and also gives us a Sacrifice outlet and then a bit of Ramp with Arcane Signet. Bastion of Remembrance, another Drain effect alongside Cruel Celebrant and Blood Artist whenever one of our creatures dies. And Phyrexian Arena, more card draw at the cost of life, and we've got a few ways of gaining life. And then Conclave Tribunal, a nice removal spell with Convoke, since we've got so many cheap creatures that can tap to help us pay for it. And then last but not least, the Liliana Dreadhorde General at 6 mana, which draws a card whenever a creature we control dies, including tokens, and can generate zombie tokens or make each player sacrifice two creatures. And then Bolas the Citadel, also a nice one, especially if we can combo it with our Voice Strider to manipulate the top of our library and can potentially just win the game the turn we play it. And then going over the mana base, we've got plenty of lands that do things like Castle Ardenvale to make a token, Castle Lochthwain to draw more cards, Shafat Dunes to give our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn can be nice if we sacrifice Elanda and make an army of vampire tokens. And then also Fraxin Tower, of course, can sacrifice a creature to add two black mana, so it can maybe help us ramp into Liliana or Boas the Citadel a turn sooner. And then a whole host of dual lands. And finally, Agadim's Awakening, which can also get back our creatures from the graveyard, especially powerful if we've got a nice spread of mana costs, which of course we have plenty of creatures at one and two mana, but even at three and four, maybe let Elanda go to the graveyard instead of back to the command zone, so we can Awakening for four and bring them all back. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Tiny Bones discard deck. Missing white mana, unfortunately, so this is a mulligan. And this is better. And then turn one, can play a cat. So we just want to empty our hand as quickly as possible, so... We don't get punished by all those discard effects. I think I'll play the Signet. And then Cat can block Dread Wanderer. Hopefully draw land next turn so we can start emptying our hands, maybe get Broodmoth in play. Alright, there's Tiny Bones. So rewards the opponent for making us discard. Alright, I guess we'll just play Minister and then the most mana efficient play we can make. The rest is gonna miss. And a Scrap Heap Scrounger, that's fine. Ooh, Citadel, we're pretty far from casting. Yeah, not drawing the lands is a little unfortunate. But uh, I guess for now, kind of want to get the Cruel Celebrant in play. Which seems like the most important card to make sure gets out there. Davrail's going to make me discard. I'm just going to get rid of Citadel since we're just never going to cast it before they make us discard it. Voice Strider can at least help me find a land for next turn. <laughs> Could have attacked Ministrant at Davriel, because if they block, then next turn I'll have the Spirit Tokens to pressure Davriel. But I could do that now as well. Try and get a Brute Moth in play. Swamp is fine. And I'll probably just take three for now. 
They want to block with the garrison cant until we've got Broodmoth in play. Perish the thought. All right. So we're left with a Broodmoth. Loneliness can hurt. Take out Davriel, and I guess we'll start attacking the opponent as well. Oh, finally, nap time. And then we can play a land on next turn. And then if we find a sacrifice outlet, we could potentially threaten lethal with Cruel Celebrant and all the extra creatures we get from Broodmoth. So just escaping Wostrider could get the job done, which requires one more land. Sacrifices Rat to Tower to take out Broodmoth. That's too bad. Fatal push a nice one. I think I still want to take it and then play Landa before we start blocking. Yeah, I think I'll land up before Strider. And I'll stay back with the uh, Spirits this time. So Tiny Bones could also be activated soon if they get 6 mana, so gotta be a little bit careful. Guess we'll leave Broodmoth in the graveyard in case we can get it back with Agadim's Awakening. Alright, so how much damage can we deal? Quite a bit, I'm sure. If we attack with the spirits, put them to 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my opponent's dead here. Don't have to do everything right now, I suppose. But I can't imagine them having much interaction, so let's do the math. Points at 14, I sacrifice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 creatures, so that's 6 triggers. Points at 8, Elanda gets 6 counters, and then, yeah, that should be it. And I can do everything at instant speed, so even if they have removal, we should still be able to get there. Castle's a fine draw. So it takes a little bit of clicking here. I guess if we sack Elenda and they kill Cruel Celebrant in response, that could be a little bit bad. So maybe that part I should do in their upkeep. Just to be safe. Alright, I'll do it now. All right, doesn't look like they had anything. Now my opponent explodes, so yeah. Opponent was at a pretty healthy 16 life, but just takes a little bit of sacrificing and a cruel celebrant to end the game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Nathroi graveyard deck, and yeah, our hand's fine. Probably gonna play Gutter Bones on one, since we want to hit our land drops to get up to six for Liliana. Turn two, Dusk Legion Zealots. Alright, so 
could use a sacrifice outlet to go with artists and some of these creatures. But for now we're doing okay. Can artist. I don't expect my opponent to wipe the boards anytime soon. Rejuvenator for ramp. Alright, savior could be nice. I kind of want a savior plus enforcer here. Instead of playing a 4 drop and have my opponent potentially wipe the board. So let's do that. And then... I guess we can send both, and if they trade for gutter bones, I can also get it back. Alright. So we're getting a bit of chip damage in. Gonna be a Skyclave Apparition to exile Gutter Bones. Can't use Savior to protect that one. D Spark, not very useful at the moment. So, Apparition's not a human, so they can mutate onto it. Although, currently, only Rejuvenator in the graveyard. Um, yeah, I guess we'll either Tysa or Elinda. Let's Tysa first. Yeah, finding a sacrifice outlet would be very useful. Cavalier's a good one. It's gonna put a bunch of stuff in the graveyard. So just one creature with a simulacrum. Priest. I don't know if I want to despark the Cavalier since it's not bothering me all that much. So instead we can Priest Enforcer or... And Lenda. I think Priest Enforcer is fine. Could also Priest and keep up the Spark. If we want to hedge our bets against the Sweeper a little bit. Conquer's Death for Taisa. Yeah, all this Exile based removal. We can't really prevent with our Savior, so that's why having a Sack Outlet in play could have been useful, so at least our creatures. Got a bit of value instead of just getting exiled. Now I can despar Conqueror's Death, although that doesn't seem super necessary. So instead, probably play Alenda. Activate Priests. Sacrificing Zealot Enforcer. And see what we draw. Swamp. And then I think I just pass, and then next turn we can slam down Liliana. Although I guess never mind, with Conqueror's death, Liliana's gonna be too more expensive, so maybe I should just despark the enchantment. Good savior to maybe protect Alanda. Bones already down to 12. And this Liliana is looking mighty fine on this board. Get out of my 
That's a lot of triggers. Can attack with a 9 powered Alenda, and that plus a Blood Artist triggers should be game, and we could still activate Priest afterwards too. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing an Emil, the Blessed Blink deck. Uh, this hand's missing white mana, not the biggest fan. Alright, this one we can keep. Probably just playing Awakening tapped on turn 1. Although I don't know how much my life total's gonna matter, so... Could also save it for later if we end up drawing a bunch of lands in a row. Yeah, I think I'll get the Awakening out of the way. Turn one goose. We've got our sacrifice outlets, our sacrifice fodder, and something that rewards us for sacrificing stuff. So, pretty good recipe. So, yeah, I can double two drop this turn since passage is still tapped. So, I think I do play Taisa. And then next turn we can Pontiff, Oligarch, and have one mana for Pontiff's ability. Our opponents are ramping in the meantime. I guess we'll attack. Alright, put a not afraid. So end of turn I might sack Oligarch just to make a few spirits. Or I can wait to play Lando first to accumulate more plus one counters. Alright, Cavalier's gonna block my spirits anyway. So now the plan is play Lenda, attack with Pontiff. Ooh, Blood Artist. Probably save that for next turn. And a Zealot seems acceptable. Well, if my opponent doesn't kill any of my stuff, there's a good chance we can kill them next turn. Or at least get close. Pontiff requiring one mana to activate means we might not quite have enough mana to do everything we want. But we can definitely do a lot of damage. Aspirin, sure. So do I sack anything now? I guess we'll wait. Play artists. Anything in the graveyards that they can get back? Henge and Tulsimir if Cavalier dies. Is that a problem? Yeah, it's a little annoying. So I can activate Pontiff four times, which, of course, we have to remember the Taisa doubling all the triggers, which works nicely with the Lenda too. I think we can uh, get aggressive here. So these two attack. Opponent takes it. Start by sacking Oligarch. And one more. 
Our tokens have Vigilance and Lifelink thanks to Taisa as well. So my opponent's about to take 9. I can make it even more here if I want. Sure, why not? Sir points at one. And we have a blood artist in place, so yeah, we'll see what they can do. Apparition exiling artists. That's step one. So yeah, if they can play a meal and start blinking some of their creatures that could be problematic. They have two flying blockers here for my spirit tokens. Final payment should do it. We'll pay five life and kill a Gilded Goose. And attack with our spirits for the win. Well, that was a nice showing of all the synergies between Taisa, Lenda, and our various sacrifice outlets. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing an Aurelia Exemplar of Justice deck, so you can expect it to be pretty aggressive. Uh, this hand has Celebrant Artist and Pontiff, which is a good mix. Arena might be a little bit weak in this matchup since we're going to be under pressure. And only two lands, no real removal spell. So I could see this hand being a little bit awkward in this matchup where we're going to be getting attacked quite a bit without having any real interaction. So I think I have to take my free mulligan here, even though it could be a good hand in a different matchup. This is also awkward because we have both Arena and Citadel, which are two of our worst cards in this matchup. But Priest is potentially very good if it doesn't get answered. Alright, we'll try it. So if Priest survives, we might have a chance. Tashik, alright. Now we're still taking quite a beating, but uh, get to untap with Priest. And then I can play the center into Arena or into Artist, probably into Arena. So I should attack first. We get some chum blockers. And next turn we can do it again. Yeah, I don't think I want to chump. Awakening could be good. So I can play artists. Could have also played Elenda this turn. Although I can activate priests after attacking and then tribunal Karizef perhaps. Or I can save tribunal for the uh, Aurelia. But I kind of just want to gain a bit of life with blood artist triggers. And then we'll see what we get. Pontiff. So we can still Tribunal Karizev. Or I can just Pontiff and pass. Or I can play Elenda now. I guess playing Elenda is still reasonable. So there's Aurelia. 
And we'll take six. Brood Moth could also be a fun one. Well, we've got a wealth of options. Don't think playing Citadel is our plan. I could, however, Awakening, get back the center witness. So I think the plan here is to Agadim's Awakening for two, getting back the center and hunted witness. Then we can activate priests, sacrificing both of them. We'll get two tokens plus two mana. We can use the two mana and the two tokens to convoke tribunal, exiling Aurelia, and then we'll be able to get a nice hidden with our life linking Elenda. Get a whole bunch of Blood Artist triggers as well. And then we can Convoke Tribunal. I guess we'll leave the Zombie token back. Exile Aurelia, and yeah, my opponent concedes. Nice, close game here against Boros Agro and Priest of Forgotten Gods putting in a ton of work onto the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Croxa Titan of Death's Hunger deck, and our hand seems acceptable. Got a bit of removal. Some creatures we don't mind sacrificing, some creatures that are good alongside sacrifice. If they play a Croxa turn 2, what do we discard? Probably one of the two removal spells, try and keep Citadel in hand. Although that could be a bit ambitious, since getting to 6 mana might not happen. Yeah, I guess we'll get rid of Citadel, especially if they end up escaping Croxa within the next couple turns. Order of Midnight to get back Croxa. Alright. So next turn they can play it again. And has to discard Midnight Reaper to hand size. For now, I guess we'll play Alenda. And I'm not sure which is better between Heartless Act and Final Payment to keep, assuming we discard one of them. Since the sacrifice effect from payment could actually be beneficial with Alenda in play. So our opponent missed their land drop last turn, found a Field of Ruin, and called the Death Dweller to get back a Midnight Reaper. So that one I cannot Heartless Act because it has a Death Touch and Menace counter. So I guess we'll go Tithe Taker, final payment. Sacrifice, Tithe Taker seems okay. Alenda starts growing. If they replay Crocs, I'm happy discarding Liliana. It's a little unfortunate that we drew our two six drops here, but uh, so it goes. And if their plan is to play Crocs, they're gonna fall pretty far behind on board. So instead, Stomp takes care of Cruel Celebrant. Alenda grows. And the Blood Chief's Thirst grows Alenda once again. Alright, I guess it's time to attack. And we'll see whether or not they make us discard Liliana. Or if they've got something else in mind. Not too many ways for a Ragdos deck to exile Alanda, although there's definitely a few. Vraska's Contempt comes to mind. But if they just Destroy Alenda will get five vampire tokens.
Yeah, I should probably just hang on to my removal spell here. Elenda also picks up a counter from Croxa, which is a fun interaction. And an old priest, which is gonna get destroyed. And that should do it. So, pretty quick game here against Croxa. Which is a bit of a weird commander since you actively wanted to go to the graveyard. So yeah, overall we got some nice games with Elenda and definitely got to see the power of the deck once it starts getting all its synergies combined. And as I've mentioned in the introduction, once you get bored of Elenda you can easily switch it out with Taysa and keep the rest of the deck unchanged. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I'll be posting more historic brawl videos throughout a week for as long as the event remains available. So make sure to join the Discord server either by becoming a patron or subscribing on Twitch and you'll be able to vote for the next brawl video that goes up. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.